Hi everybody, I'm Linda Myers and I'm the Human Resources Director for the Tony Graham Automotive Group. Welcome to the 24-hour Yoga Palooza in support of Chio Foundation. The Tony Graham Automotive Group is pleased and thrilled to support this great cause for the Chio Foundation. And what are we made of? Tony Graham Toyota has been in Ottawa for 50 years. We've been around a long time. What are we comprised of? We have a number of dealerships. We have our Tony Graham Canada Toyota dealership out in Canada. We have Tony Graham Toyota. We have Tony Graham Lexus. Tony Graham Auto Edge, which is our newest one. That's located out in Robertson Road. Last but not least, we have our Tony Graham Collision Center, which where you can get your cars fixed any time of year. So once again, we are thrilled to be part of the 24-hour Yoga Palooza. We are honored to be part of this and be the title sponsor. We want to recognize and honor all the nurses, the PSWs, the doctors, the custodians, the families, everybody associated with the CHEO Foundation. And once again, thrilled to be part of it. Kids can't fight cancer alone. And as all of us are connected and all of us go through our yoga practices over the month of October, we're making a difference. So enjoy your practice and namaste. Hello everyone, namaste and satnam. My name is Sonia Sharma Patri, and it's a pleasure to be doing yoga for charity um, for the second year in a row. And today what I will be doing is a Kundalini yoga class for all of you. So for some of you who have not done Kundalini yoga, uh, it is a yoga of awareness and it includes um, different aspects of yoga, such as mudras, which are hand postures, asanas, uh, meditation. Uh, sometimes it'll, in, it'll include a breath meditation or a mantra meditation. And um, it brings all that together into the whole yoga practice. So I hope you enjoy it. We'll have a little bit of all those different elements in, in today's session and uh, what we'll be beginning with is the opening mantra it's known as the Ong Namo Gurudev Namo that we'll be doing that first and then it'll be followed with a few warm-ups and then the Kriya which is the sequence of exercises uh, just for that particular um, theme and every Kundalini class is going to be different depending on the theme and then it'll be followed with a shavasana, a relaxation, um, and really that's really what most of the yoga, the Kundalini yoga um, class, that whole theme is all about. So I'm looking forward to sharing this with you, and if you've never done it before, well, welcome, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Satna. Settling into your own body, bringing in awareness, Stillness, the spine is straight, shoulders are relaxed. Inhaling and exhaling. As you inhale, inflating your belly, visualizing the air coming all the way up, and then exhaling, removing the air from the top part of the body, from the diaphragm, and then bringing the navel in as you exhale. keeping the shoulders relaxed. And let's take a deep inhale together. Exhale. And inhale to begin the chant. If you've never heard of this opening chant, just listen in to the vibrations of the sound of this mantra. Deep inhale. Aum Namo Guru Dev Namo Aum Namo Guru Om Namo 
Gurudev Namo. Take a deep inhale. Suspend your breath, focus to the third eye point. Set your intention. What would you like to invite into your life? Into your mind? Into your spirit? And then exhale. So let's do a few warm ups before we begin our Kriya. And this is just to warm up the spine, so you may want to just stretch your legs out. And taking a deep inhale, this is called the life nerve stretch. So taking a deep inhale, stretching it all the way up, and then bending towards the left leg, coming forward, trying to reach as far as you can. Coming forward, using the hips, inhaling all the way up and then reaching towards the right leg. Inhaling up, looking towards the left leg, stretching the arms out, bending forward, inhaling up again, looking towards your right. And let's do this a few times. Inhale up, exhale down. So don't push yourself if you have any lower back issues, just trying to reach either to the ankle or the knee, wherever works for you. Listen to your body. This is a great one to warm up the nervous system because we've got all the nerves just running through the legs, especially for people who may have restless legs, things like that as we're sleeping, which tends to build up with stress. So this helps alleviate some of those symptoms. And take a deep inhale to end. Exhale. Perfect. Let's do the next one. We're going to do another warm up. So, coming lying down, we're going to be doing some leg lifts. So, coming lying down, and the legs are touching, the feet are touching, knees are touching. The palms are flat on the mat, or if you feel that you need some leverage for your lower back, feel free to bring, bring the palms right below your lower back as a little cushion. And then you want to point your toes, inhaling all the way up to 90 degree angle, exhaling, bringing it down. So just see what works for you. Try to keep the legs straight. We're working on the navel center, the digestive center, our internal organs, our whole digestive fire lies over there. So let's do a few of these. Inhaling, bringing the legs up. Exhaling, bringing it down. And the last few. 
Deep inhale, stretch it up. Exhale, bring the legs down, bring the feet apart, removing your hands from underneath if you have your arms there. And just relaxing here for a few seconds. Breathing right into the belly. So every Kundalini class will generally have a theme and the theme that I've chosen today is called a sequence to feel secure and strong. And I chose this because while well, we've been going through so many unknown, uncertain times right now and many times, you know, we start feeling a little bit insecure because we don't know what's happening um, and because of all the images that were bombarded all around us, um, the negativity that's around us, the grief, a lot of different feelings are happening all around collectively in humanity. So during these times, it becomes even more important for us to feel strong and secure when those depths come in. And this particular Kriya, what it does is it works on your own electromagnetic energy, which we all have. Uh, which is now proven by science. I have a great quote to share with you from Dr. Joe Dispenza, who says that the heart produces the strongest magnetic field in the body, almost 5,000 times greater than the mind. So when our mind tends to bring us down, which tends to be rational, it's the heart, the heart energy, the frequency of the heart that becomes even more important to help lead the mind into compassion, empathy, and understanding, which the world needs right now, and which yoga and meditation are really helping people uh, to get through. Uh, having these wonderful tools is just amazing, and to be able to do these, use these tools to collect funds is even better. So this particular um, exercise that we're going to be doing a sequence in Kundalini Yoga is going to work on the electromagnetic energy in our body, connecting to our heart, increasing it, vibrating it, expanding it so that we feel protected, we feel secure, and so that we have the resilience to face any sort of adversity in our life or challenges. So let's begin. And there's a particular sequence that I'm going to follow through so you will see me watching my notes. So the first one that we're going to do is called a Sufi grind. So you're, you remain in the seated posture and feel free to put something underneath your lower back. Um, sometimes you may be able to put cushions over here. So feel free to do that in some of the exercises. And that gives you a little more stability. So this is a, a great um, thing to do to help your body, to help the knees, especially for people who may have issues with their knees. So the first exercise is a Sufi grind. And for this one, I am going to remove the, remove the cushions because you want good stability on the ground. And then I can bring it back in for the other exercises. Your hands are going to be on the knees and you're going to come forward and then over to the right hand side and then back and then forward. And you will be going in this circular clockwise direction. Feel free to close your eyes as you go inwards. And the hips remain stable. You're mainly using the third chakra the navel center to churn and to feel this in your body, connecting to the navel center as you keep the hips stable, the lower back stable on the yoga mat. You may want to inhale as you come forward and then exhale as you spine, as you bring the spine towards the back. 
So your spine is flexing. It's flexing forward as you come forward, and then it's flexing back as you come back. This is a simple exercise to do to bring groundedness during times of uncertainty, during times of overwhelmingness that we may feel. This is a good one to bring stability into the hips area. It helps ground us. And then we're going to come to the center and then go in the opposite direction, bringing awareness to the breath as we do this. And smile. As you continue with this motion, bring your thoughts back to happiness, bring your thoughts back to stability and security in life, feeling all the things that you have gratitude for. And let's come to the center, bringing the hands in Gyan Mudra, spine straight, taking a deep inhale. Suspend the breath, focus to the third eye point. And then exhale. And now coming back into the second posture, the cat cow. So you want to make sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, fingers are spread out wide, your knees are directly underneath your hips, about three, four inches apart. And as you inhale, you want to curve your spine down. As you exhale, you want to curve your spine. You want to round your spine the other way. So it looks like this, inhaling, and then exhaling, looking towards your navel. Inhaling. And exhale. Keeping your eyes open as you're going through the cat cow motion. This is a great one for the spine. This warms up the entire spine, warms up the nervous system. Take a deep inhale, curve the spine downwards, looking straight up. And then exhale, curving the spine the other way. And then releasing, shaking out the hips. And So we're going to remain in the same posture as we were in the cat-cow position. And for the next one, we will be doing a heart opener exercise. So the right palm remains flat on the mat. And you will be lifting the left arm all the way up and trying to look towards the palm. So this opens up the whole area right over here, the diaphragm area. This is working on the heart center. 
and continue with long deep breathing right into the belly remaining stable Use the breath to help keep the arm up. It may feel challenging. Use that breath. Unless you have any medical conditions, continue using that strength of the breath to keep the arms up. Breathing right into it. And let's take a deep breath in, stretch up, and then exhale, bring the hand down, shaking out the hips. And now we're going to do the other side, raising the right arm up, stretching it all the way up, trying to look at the right palm, long deep breathing. Remaining strong. So when we work with our heart, we're also working on our immune system. We have the thymus gland, which is located near the heart center. You're strengthening the immune system with this posture. And take a deep breath in, stretch it up. And then exhale, bring the right palm down onto the mat, shaking out the hips. And coming into the seated posture, into Sukhasana. Feel free to bring the cushions underneath the lower back. And now we're going to do the Aura Charger. This is a good one. This uses a particular type of breath called the Breath of Fire. And the Breath of Fire creates a lot of heat in the body. You all notice. And it also clears out a lot of negativity in our psyche, which we tend to hold because of certain images that we're watching, whether it's CNN, whether it's news, whether it's listening to a family member, we tend to accumulate all that heaviness. So the breath of fire, it's called the breath of fire. The breath of fire helps clear the psyche using that pattern of breath. So the way the breath works is you will be pumping the, the navel inwards, pushing the air all the way up right through your nostrils. So it looks like this. You're really pulling in that navel really strong and then pushing that air all the way up. And there's also going to be a hand mudra for that. So the arms are going to be stretched up to about 60 degree angles. This is 45. We're going to bring it up even higher to a 60 degree angle. The thumbs are pointed straight up. The fingers are going to be curled in right on the top part of your palm. You're curling in the fingers inwards. These are pressure points, acupressure points. You're raising the arms up to about 60 degree angle. And let's begin the breath of fire. Now, women, if you're on your monthly cycle or if you're pregnant, then you don't want to do this breath. Then you just want to do the long, deep breathing. So feel free to choose whatever breath works for you. And let's do this for about a couple of minutes to feel the difference. If you need to take a break in between, that's fine. And let's do this, closing our eyes, focusing inwards towards the third eye point.
keep going. If you feel that this is too fast for you, then switch over to long, deep breathing or take a break with your arms, bringing them down or slow the breath down, going a little bit slower. So feel free to choose. I tend to go faster because I have been doing Breath of Fire for a long time, but choose what is comfortable for you. If you, if you want to go slowly, keep going slowly. Try to keep it up. Try to keep the arms up. This is a victorious pose, and this really works on the spirit, on our mindset. And keep going for another 20 more seconds. Let's take a deep inhale, stretch up, bringing the thumb tips touching first and then the palms touching, stretching up. Exhale. Let's do this again, deep inhale, sweeping everything around you. Deep inhale, suspend the breath, look up. Exhale. Last time, deep inhale, look up, exhale, and moving the shoulders around. That's a fun one. I usually like to do that, especially in the morning. This is a good breath to do in the mornings, not in the, in the nighttime before you go to bed, uh, mainly because it will wake you up. <laughs> So it has a similar effect like coffee. It's going to create that heat in the body and it does it all naturally. So let's do the next exercise, which is going to be working on the optic nerves as well as the diaphragm area, the heart center, and the shoulder blades in the back. So you're going to bring your five fingers right in front of the face, closer to the, the sixth chakra, known as the third eye point. We're going to bring our fingers right in front of our face, about two, three inches away from the face. You're not touching the face. And what you'll be doing is you will be inhaling in this position, exhaling, opening up this, this movement right here. So the arms, the elbows remain parallel to the ground. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Feel free to close your eyes and go inwards as you do this. You're trying to touch the shoulder blades in the back as you do this. Again, you're working on the nerves in the heart center. And let's take a deep inhale. Exhale. Bring the hands down, rotate the shoulders, release any tension, moving the head around, perhaps going in a circular motion. So this really helps remove a lot of tension that we collect around our shoulders especially when we're on laptops and things like that, it all tends to accumulate. Okay, so the next one is gonna be the archer pose and we'll be standing up for this posture. We're gonna to come to the back of our mat and I'm gonna raise the screen a little bit so you're able to see me better. So we're gonna to come to the back of our mat and we're going to lunge forward with our right foot first. Lunging forward with the right foot. The right foot is pointed straight forward ahead of us. And the left foot is going to be at a 45 to 60 degree angle. And try to lunge as forward as you can. So you may want to just move that foot slightly forward, feeling that stretch in your upper thigh. And then once you're comfortable, raise the arms up. 
and you're going to be facing forward, looking ahead victoriously, using long deep breathing, align the spine, making the spine straight, feeling this stretch, feeling this in your upper back, long deep breathing. Smile as you do this. And as you can notice, we're working on our heart center again. And every time we work on the heart center, we're working on our electromagnetic frequency. You're incorporating the breath with the posture, which is an amazing combination to help change how we feel, our mood. Another few more seconds to go. And taking a deep inhale, stretch as far as you can. Suspend the breath. And exhale, bringing the hands down. And coming out of the position, slowly coming to the back of your mat, shaking it out, and coming to the back of your mat to do the other side. So now we're going to lunge forward with our left foot this time, lunging forward with the left foot, try to bring the left foot as far as you can, making sure that the knee remains on top of the ankle or behind the ankle. You don't want the knee to be ahead of the ankle. And your right leg is stretched back. The right foot is at a 45 to 60 degree angle. We're going to raise the arms up again. So this time the right, sorry, the left arm is forward, the right arm is behind, and long deep breathing. Breathing right into that belly and exhaling, bringing that navel in as you exhale. It's not about perfecting the posture. This is really about you trying your best, honoring your body, loving your body, and loving it regardless of how far it can stretch and how far it may not be able to stretch honoring that body, honoring ourself. And let's take a long deep breath in, stretch up, hold the posture, suspend the breath, and then exhale, bringing the arms down and then slowly coming out of the posture shaking it out and moving on to our next posture which is going to be an alternate cobra and a triangle pose okay so for the next posture we will be alternating between the cobra pose and the triangle pose and we will be keeping a couple of seconds of suspension between the poses just to integrate the energy that we're creating. So let's come lying down on our belly for the Cobra Pose. Coming lying down on the belly, the palms are directly underneath your shoulders. You're going to bring your forehead to the mat. 
making sure that your feet are touching, your knees are touching. And with the forehead to the ground, you're going to inhale, push yourself up. Looking straight outwards, feeling that stretch in your lower back. And then tucking the toes underneath, pushing the hips up into a downward dog. Taking a couple of breaths over here. And then bringing the knees down, coming down, lying down on your belly and we're going to do the cobra again and then exhaling into the downward dog so keep going at your own pace whatever works for you And slowly coming out of that posture. <sighs> okay, so next we're going to be doing a meditation, which is part of this particular Kriya. And there's two options. You can either bring the hands in Gyan Mudra, the thumb and the index finger touching and resting it on your knees. Or you may also do another posture where you're taking your left palm bringing it on top of your right shoulder and then you're going to take your right palm and bring it on top of your left shoulder so it's like giving yourself a nice big hug to make yourself feel strong and secure uh, and of course covers the heart center as well as you do this the spine remains straight so you have two different options you can either be giving yourself a nice big hug as you as you chant or you can bring your fingers in Gyan Mudra and just resting, spine is straight, or not chanting, whatever you feel, whatever is comfortable for you. So you can just listen to listen into the sounds and focus to the third eye point as you listen or chant. So let's begin. 
Eyes are closed, chin is slightly tucked in. Long deep breathing before we begin. The mantra is Gobinda, Gobinda, Hari, Hari. And Gobinda relates to the master, the master of our own mind, the master of our own senses, so that we can master our own life. Oh, 
Okay, now coming into Shavasana, into relaxation, you want to make sure that you integrate everything, all the work that you've done, you integrate it into every cell in your body. Savasana relaxation, matter of fact, is the most important part of yoga. So don't ever skip that part. It is the integral part which brings everything back into every cell of the body, distributes all that information. It gives it time to assimilate all that. So let's come lying down. And you want to lie down, making sure the feet are slightly apart. Both the feet are flopped over to either side. The arms are stretched out. Palms are facing up. And taking a deep inhale, exhaling through the mouth, just letting it all go. Let all that tension go. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. <sighs> Let's do that again. Deep inhale, exhale. <sighs>
And now slowly taking a deep breath, bringing awareness into your body. Wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. Rotating your feet in a circular motion, rotating your wrists in a circular motion, awakening the nerve endings. Taking a deep breath in, stretching the arms back, stretching the feet forward. And then exhale, bending your knees, bring the soles of your feet on the mat and then dropping both knees to one side, head to the opposite side, doing some cat stretches. And then bringing your knees towards your chest and rocking and rolling side to side front to back. Rocking yourself all the way up. And now we're going to close the class. And I like to play um, a beautiful closing prayer. It's called the long time sun. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surrounds you and the light within you shine on. Uh, it's a beautiful version sung by Sanatham Kaur. And I know you will enjoy it. Feel free to bring someone to your mind, including all the people that need our help right now, who may be struggling financially, emotionally, physically, mentally bringing them all to our mind, bringing love for Mother Earth and humanity. May the long time sun shine upon you. Oh, surround you.
Peace to all, light to all, love to all. Satnam.